hello there. I'm just checking our rain gauge here at Walking Mountains. At Walking Mountains, we collect weather data. After we've collected our data, we upload it into Coco Ross. Once we collect the data, we input it in the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. This is where people from all over the country can input their data and scientists can look for patterns over time. Do you remember that word for weather patterns that happen over a long period of time? Yes, that's right. We call that climate. Now, you might be wondering, why do scientists care about the climate? If it happens over a really long period of time, we can't really predict what's gonna happen, right? Well, since climate is weather patterns over time, we just look at the patterns and we can predict what's next in the pattern. And that way, we know what's gonna be coming next. This is the average global temperature for every year collected by NASA. If we look at, say, 1900, that year the average temperature was about 57 degrees. And the line goes up and down, up and down, up and down, because the temperature is different every year. But if we were to look at the past 30 years, what is that line doing? That line is going up. We haven't really seen an average temperature below 58 degrees in about 20 years. If the temperature is going up over a long period of time, what can we predict will happen? Yeah, it's probably going to go up more. There might be some lower years and some higher years, but overall we think the temperature will increase. That's our prediction. What do you think is going to happen if it gets to be a lot hotter? We're going to check out a case study. A case study is like an example. Today our case study is the Colorado River. The Colorado River is super duper important. If you like to eat, then you need the Colorado River. Two thirds of our winter vegetables are watered by the Colorado River. So it's pretty important for agriculture. Do you like swimming or rafting? Cause the river is a great place to have fun. The river is also home to many plants and animals that need its water. If the temperatures go up, how might that affect the Colorado River? This data is from the U.S. Global Change Research Program, which is a program that was created by Congress to track changes in the climate and weather. What you can see on this graph, it's showing that the temperatures are going up and down, up and down, but the trend line, that's that straight line, shows that the average temperature in the Colorado River Basin is getting higher. This graph is also from the U.S. Global Change Research Program, and it's tracking the Colorado River's flow, or how much water is in the river. You can see it goes up and down every year, but overall the trend line is showing that it's going down, or we're gonna have less water. So we're having higher temperatures over time and less water. If we know that we're having higher temperatures and less water over time, then we can predict that that pattern might continue. If we know that pattern could continue, we can be prepared for it. What are some ways that you could be prepared for less water? While I brush my teeth, I'm gonna leave the water turned off to help conserve water. I am going to pick up trash along the river, just like this piece that I found right here. So as the waters rise with the spring runoff, the trash won't get swept away. I'm going to eat all of my food. A lot of water went into growing this food, so I don't want to waste it. I like to take fewer and shorter showers. What I do is I listen to music and I try to keep my shower to one to two songs or shorter. I think I'll let my lawn do its own thing. I don't have to water it. I'll let nature take its course. We have an expedition mission for you. There are two choices. You could do both, or you could just choose one. Option number one, find some water near your house. It could be the Colorado River, 
but it can also be a stream or a local river. I want you to sit by that river for eight minutes. And I want you to get to know that river and write everything you see or observe. Do this once a week for an entire season. See if anything changes over the course of the season. Option number two is go find some water near you. Could be the Colorado River, or it could be something a little closer to home. And get to know that river, splash around in it, turn over rocks, look for bugs,